All right, call hello Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rakakodash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well over the flock. Shalom and salutation to you, brothers out here, pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the Akim and the Ak Akwa listening. This is Acts 17 and 30. In the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So that is a commandment for men to repent, turn back. And you can't turn back. Or feel sorry for unless you know what you've done. All right? So the understanding of the scriptures concerning uh statutes, laws, and commandments must be uh must be uh must be done. You know, you gotta understand that. You start there, right? Where you transgress, lift up thy voice and show my people their transgression. Alright. Um verse thirty one because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. By that man whom he hath ordained. By that man whom he hath ordained. That was Yahweh Shah. But who's doing the judgment? The Father. So this video is going to be about um, why Esau is going to get judged. Um, why does he deserve it? You know, um, our people, the first thing that they want to do is defend the oppressor. We understand y'all coming from the edge of Stockholm Syndrome. We understand that your conditioning is even conditioned. To make you feel as if uh, you got to defend the... Um, the uh, oppressor, the, um, you know, the, the conqueror, eat them, but you don't, you know, but you still feel like you do, or you still feel like, you know, it should be justifiable, which is fine because we know that the, the true power of the Lord is just and true, uh, as his word is. And so, well, here's the answer here. This is first and foremost, it's not about what you want. It's not about how like you, how much you like the man and how good they've been to you and how they have decent neighborhoods and they clean up after themselves. But it's about what the Most High is going to require. And he always requires that which is past. So it says, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men and that he hath raised him from the dead. So there's going to be a judgment day, appointed a day, a judgment day. Second Peter 2 and 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. The Most High will have a day of judgment. So once again, you could completely forget about the Most High if you want. You can forget about his judgments. If you think that's going to do anything for you, it won't because it still will come to pass. That day is going to come where the Lord is going to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust for the day of for the day of judgment to be punished. And when you go into that word judgment, what does it mean? The, number one, the ability to make considered decisions or come to a sensible conclusion. So, yeah, there's a shrewdness and the discernment that the Heavenly Father has, right? To be able to uh, accuse um, Esau and give him, uh, you know, his... Um, you know, his, his contribution, you know, his punishment based on, um, everything he has done. So you have to reason the Lord uses his intelligence and awareness to reason, um, why he saw got to be punished. When you go to the second definition of judgment, a misfortune or calamity viewed as a divine punishment, your just desserts, your penalty, your retribution, and your punishment. Retribution means punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance for a wrong or a criminal act. This is where you get into why Esau has to be judged and destroyed. We say it all the time. He's going to be destroyed, right? He's going to go into captivity and for a thousand years. Then he's going to be destroyed. Why? What's his track record? Now it's time to go back into history because you, in order for us to say, make these statements that the Lord is just power, but he's going to destroy Esau. You got to know why he's going to destroy him. And they got to kind of match. Well, Psalms 37 and 12. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Ultimately, the wicked, who is Esau Edom, is plotting. And a plot is a scheme, a trick. Going back to who he is in the reincarnation, Cain. All right. Uh, means the serpent in the garden and Cain plotting against his brother Abel. Murder, right? Plotted to plot. Um, um, says land, but that's not um, what it means. Just want to get the quick definition 
a plan, scheme, you see? To make a plan. All right, so that's what's going on. It's a scheme. They stay scheming. The wicked uh, scheme or plotted against the just. The just are the upright ones. The just are the justified. We're justified in our faith through through faith um, and belief on the scriptures. We're justified, um, and through the uh, you know through the salvation and you know the blood and the resurrection, death and resurrection. Y'all shall be justified. We adopted back. So you have a just and you have a wicked. And the wicked plotteth against the just. See, the just are the fair-minded, the equitable, you know, based on behaving according to what is morally right and fair. Okay? You know, the honest ones, the virtuous ones, the moral ones, the straight ones, the truthful and sincere ones, the trustworthy ones. It's quote-unquote the good ones, right? The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. So once again, the Lord is the one that's watching all of this. You thought you got away, and that's the scripture talk about Esau. No one, no, no one can seeth. The Most High can't seeth. Is he a power far off? The belief is that the Most High ain't gonna do nothing, and even even the Esau is coming out boldly and saying, "But we are gonna be above the God of the Bible because we have a our technology. God produced organic things. We can produce inorganic things. So it's just." Esau's pride right now is so that far lifted up that the most high, he definitely don't like pride, right? It's written on six things I hate if and start with a, a proud look and a lying tongue. It's Esau, man. What doesn't he lie about? That's really where all these conspiracy theories come from. The fact that he likes to lie and cover things up and scapegoat it. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation what needs to be mentioned is that the upright conversation is not just every old poor man the poor and the needy is talking about the upright the upright are the ones that's turning back to the lord converted being healed being washed by the word all right return the converts the proselytes the new members coming into this truth the new believers coming this truth you are now through upright conversation, have become, according to the scripture, the ones that the wicked are plotted against. They don't plot against the wicked of all people. Those people, they've already won over. Once Satan got you on his side, he don't take care for you or anymore. He leaves you up to the to the elements. But the ones who Satan is a roaring lion seeking who, whom he may devour going around for is the upright, as you can see here, right? Now we're going to get into more of what Esau is about. Psalms 137 and 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even into the foundation of that word race, meaning destroy it, destroy it, erase. That's what you the word eraser. Um, they wanted us destroyed, erased by the Babylonians when they came in. This is also um, referenced in the book of Obadiah. Let me grab it real quick. Um, one in... Uh, one in ten. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. So we can once again understand that the Most High requires everything that's passed, and he's seen Esau since Esau came into power, and even before then, because at this time they were not in power. The Babylonians were, but they were still trying to see the destruction of our people, because his ha hatred against us is outlast, and I'll get that too. So, under those conditions and the conditions that he still has us in, uh, the violence against his brother Jacob, going back to Jacob and Esau, they were brothers uh, of the same parents. However, um, Esau had the spirit of Cain and Jacob had that upright spirit of Abel. Um, shame shall cover these. So, there's a time in which shame is going to cover you so-called white people, Caucasians out here who are Esau Edomites, man. All right, so once again, I would die one in 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, referencing uh, what we just read in Psalms 137. In the day that the strangers carried away captives, captive his forces, Esau was just watching. And foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, 
even that was as one of them. Okay. Where I was as one of them. So he's been um he's been identified already, man. It says, but thou shouldest not have looked on thy brother in uh on the day of thy brother in the day, but thou hast but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. The Lord is just letting Esau know why he's about to violate you in the worst way. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity. Nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Because they took away all our, a lot of our precious goodly things. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those that did escape remember race it race it meaning there was some of us that was escaping the land of edom is right directly south of the land of um judah all right and so as some of the judas was trying to escape who you think was cutting them off over here they over here <laughs> neither shouldest thou have shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress so Esau was caught red handedly. Red handed. In verse 16, for as he have drunk upon my holy mountain. So that means like you you made uh you know you, you caused us to be delivered up, you know, and destroyed. You helped uh, persecute us. So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. So Esau Edom is going to be completely eradicated and annihilated, man. You are the only people who go to the Bible dictionary and type in um, future prophecy of Edom. You go to the Zonda Bible dictionary. It'll tell you the people of great prophetic destruction and the only people who are um, who the Lord sees fit to completely annihilate. Basically, that's their lot. That's their position. That's a fitting position for somebody. But now you can realize why. It's not about just calling the white man the devil, but understanding why the Most High sees it fit. Because he's the one that's going to see it fit to do this. Why? Because that's the Most High I get down. Um, Jude uh, 1 to 14, 15 says, to execute judgment upon all and to convince. Oh, it's like your first 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saints, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. So the Most High got it in his mind to set Esau down and, and destroy them. Ezekiel 35 and 2. So the man set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesied against it. The prophecy of against Esau Edom. Is that of judgment, lamentation, mourning, and woe. And woe is destruction. That's why the third world's war is coming. It's back down here. Uh, the second world, you know, the first world is past. And the second cometh uh, soon after. Uh, that's a uh, matter of fact. That's right here. Revelation 11 and 14. The second world is past. And behold, the third world cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of the Lord and of his anointed, and he shall reign forever and forever. And the four and twenty angels were set before Yahweh, on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped Yahweh. So the reverence is going to go all back to the father who sees it fit to destroy Esau Edom for the appropriate reasons, man. So set thy face against my saying prophesy against it, which we do to this day. America is going to be destroyed. NATO and the EU is going to be destroyed. Russia is going to go into captivity. The so-called uh, white man, Caucasian, Esau, Edom today of the Bible, you're going to be destroyed. Eventually, after slavery, you're going to serve out your term in slavery and the Lord sees a fist to destroy you. What's going to happen with your soul and your spirit after that? You're probably going to other nations, but the nation of Esau won't exist uh, much into the future. It says, and I say unto it, thus saith the Lord power, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. Mount Seir is a description of um, uh, the, it's, it's a mountain 
that symbolizes the people. It's not just a place or location, but it's a mountain that symbolizes the people of Esau. It says, I am against thee, because a mountain symbolizes a government, right? Some of the mount, you know, when you go into mount, you know, you're going to uh, summit, see, organize, initiate um, uh, mount. You know, let's see if you got some more definitions for it. Uh, mount. Uh, uh, to keep watch, all right? Mountain. Um, but the uh, figurative language of what a mountain symbolizes is a government. That's why you have certain summit meetings and whatnot. Brothers know that. It says, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. So, Lord, going to do you dirty. He's going to destroy you utterly. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. But why he going to do all of this? Here's his reasoning. Here's his logic. Here's his motive. It's all vengeance. It's all to restore his people back. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and that has shed the blood of the innocent of the children of Israel by the face force of the sword in the time of their calamity. Going back all the way to Babylon again. We're going back to every time the Lord persecuted us and Esau Eden was right there. The scripture said, you know, they had, that how they don't have mercy. The scripture said they have upon the ancient, the in the ancient have thou heavily laid thy yoke. So when they, whether you are old slave or young slave, they're tearing you down, beating you up. They was buck breaking and doing all type of dirt to you because that's their people. When the most high sees a fit to judge them. When you talk about alligator bait, that's the young. The Even the young was in was was victim to Esau's cruelty. When you talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, trailer tears and, and wounded knee, the women and the children were evicted. Nobody was could outlast Esau's and dodge Esau's cruelty. He was cruel to all. It says, especially all, all nation. And the time of their iniquity had an end. So they continued their cruelty. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. You didn't hate blood. You didn't run from it then. Don't run from it now. Lord, when this video was edifying. Till next time. Shalom. Call me Shalom.